Hello, everyone. I'm Dana Perino, along with Kimberly Guilfoyle, Julie Rajinsky, Eric Bowling, and Greg Gutfeld. It's 5 o'clock in New York City, and this is The Five. With the ISIS threat widening, terrorism is front and center on the minds of Americans. The percentage who name it as the most important problem we face is at its highest level in five years. So if the 2016 election were held tomorrow, would it come down to foreign policy? Likely, according to Charles Krauthammer and Ron Fournier. There's going to be one of those rare presidential runs in which foreign affairs is one of the dominant issues. We're at one of the lowest ebbs in terms of our standing in the world, the trust of our allies and the fear of our enemies. That is a very ripe field for the Republicans. Charles is right. This is going to be a foreign policy election. I think it's going to be really tough for Hillary, given her last job. All right, Greg. Um, <laughs> Us. Do you think that we said that before they did? I think so. Look, there is no, we know this. This is the issue that matters. There is no room for liberalism in foreign policy. Foreign policy is a cage fight. So there's fluffy toys like amnesty, universal health care, childhood nutrition. Those do not win wars and they do not protect you. What protects you is the cold, brutal hammer of the greatest killing machine that has ever been created, and that is our military. And we need to let the world know that we are back and better than ever. This is an opportunity for the goofus and gallant comparison. Uh, the White House is goofus. The Republican candidates are gal gallant. Is that gallant, the way to say gallant. it? Yeah. You look at ISIS, uh, it's bombs versus proms. You look at Marie Harf, it's just, it's, it's, there's no comparison. So what we need now is we need the adults in the room. Our president is chill. We need to have will. But we can't swap them out in some kind of like presidential country international swap. And <laughs> even if we put Marie Harf and Jen Psaki in camo, they're still not going to get the message right. That's the problem. We're sort of stuck with this. This is the horse we rode in on. So what do we do about it now? Only if people get vocal and try to motivate the leaders, especially the president, to embrace the language, to say Islamic extremism, not just violent extremism. That's like a Solomon split the baby thing that he's doing. But we need to focus on ISIS and, in fact, destroying them completely, not the semantic gymnastics of degrade and destroy. Eric, at the top of the list still for the biggest concerns in Gallup was the um, uh, government dysfunction and the economy. It's just that this issue of foreign policy is now the highest that it's been since 2010. Do you oh, think no. that will continue for the next yeah, couple of years? I think, well, clearly this isn't going to be over anytime soon. So the, the, the Obama administration has had no policy, has no strategy. They decide that they're going to put, cobble together a strategy. Get this. Today, the AP announced, the AP reported that the White House announced the strategy for the summer. They're going to send 12 brigades of Iraqi soldiers, up to 20,000 soldiers, to go fight ISIS. And they said they're going to start in April or May. And if the 12 brigades aren't ready to fight in April or May, that may actually be delayed. So they went from no strategy to developing a strategy and then sending them the playbook. This, I, I, what, who are the people who are putting these ideas on paper, t sitting around a table going, let's do this now, let's tell the world what we're going to do. We'll right. tell ISIS I, exactly when we're going to hit them. This is just unbelievable. It's like they're hung over and can't function. Well, I just want to be clear. Do you guys just want to go start invading countries? Is that what you're advocating? I don't understand. Because if you're talking about just is going it, in. Is that either or? Man, where's the it, it has to be. Yeah. Right? It has to be. Well, One or the other? Said, well, because what you just said, I'm asking Greg, actually, because what you just said is you sort of, you want to go in, you want a killing machine. All right, we're going to go. We're going to go back to Iraq. We're going to take our military, which we all know is a little mm -hmm. tired. Take them back to Iraq. Well, I, don't I don't think they're, they're tired. tired. You don't think you're tired after 10 years think, of war? No, I think no. they're robust and right. ready to serve so and we're go gonna back take, in. Fine, great. Okay, we're going to take them back to Iraq. They're going to put them in Syria. We might put them in Libya. We're, maybe Yemen. Whatever it takes. Wherever it takes. So we're not going to fight. Just I want to be clear. We're going to fight I, I like, a war. You're like my lawyer. She's I know. Talking, but you're, you're answering <laughs> for me. Yes, because you're <laughs> under the influence of a testosterone patch today, and I like it. <laughs> no, I'm at, I actually do believe, and I talk to people in the military, that boots on the ground is necessary. When you're dealing with what we will call an existential or an apocalyptic evil, right. uh, perhaps I think what you're guilty of is, is uh, I, I wouldn't call it ocean privilege, because you're here, you don't have to face the evil. In, in the night, you know, if, if we had the same mentality with Nazi Germany, we wouldn't have fought them either because it's far away. Well, Nazi Germany declared war on us. I just but, want to be clear on that. Yes, and, and fight, fight over there. Us. Fight, well, I think ISIS, well, ISIS has declared war yeah. on us. No, 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 but ISIS, let me just be clear about this. They've I, never declared no, no, war on us. No, 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 let me just be clear. They said they're going to kill us. 
Carla, let yeah. me let Did me be, not? let me be clear about this. What you're advocating, I'm just I'm trying to get this straight. Is yes. you want to take the United States military to the four or five countries that I just mentioned, potentially also North Korea, which is developing and which has nuclear weapons, which may attack us or our allies, mm -hmm. potentially also if Ukraine, our ally. Yo, so, so, wait a minute. Well, so, so, so now, I'm going from ISIS to I want to bomb North Korea. Well, you just said, I want to bomb you the just Ukraine. Want to say, you just want, no, I'm asking no, you. No, no, no. What, what I am say. saying is right now we have a White House that looks really, really weak because we are, tell, like Eric said, we're telling our enemies what we won't do. What I'm saying is that we need a powerful person in charge who says we are willing to fight. Willing to fight. The word is will. We lack the will. And so that's we're important. willing to fight, and we're going to deploy, and we're going to fight. No, yeah, we have to. We, okay. That has to be on the table. It has to be on the table. I'm sure it is on the We've table. We've taken everything yes, off Eric the Collins? table, including the table. Well, Can I throw one more option in there? Yes, true. Well, there are 400,000 available troops between the Iraqi army and the Kurds available right now to yep. fight this from the ground. We can step up an air campaign. In the first four or that's five weeks... Listen to this. In the first four or five weeks of, of the, Iraq, uh, the Iraq war, we dropped, we did 100,000 sorties in five weeks. We dropped 88,000 tons of bombs on Iraq, okay. Okay, on the enemy. We've done 2,500 or so in six months here. So you went from 2,000 a day to 2,000 in six months, or around eight or nine per day. There's plenty of room to step up the air campaign right. on, the, on the U.S.'s back. So and then get the Kurds and the, the Iraqis involved okay in and, then, and then my other question is obviously after we do all of this the iranians whose hand will be tremendously uh, strengthened by the fact that their natural allies their natural opponents excuse me are people it's, that we're it's fighting an unholy alliance so it's an unholy alliance so you're also advocating that we have an alliance with Wait, iran what are you advocating do you realize, what are you yeah, advocating what, I, what are you for it's not what i'm advocating doing nothing no no it's not what i'm advocating it's not a problem no 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 no, no. We're separated by no. oceans ocean no. no. privilege no. can Listen, i say can i, I, can say, I tell you can i tell you what, what has just happened what, what? you fell for what the liberals are going to do to every Republican candidate. Mm -hmm. What she just did is to say to you, so you're for invading exactly. every country in the world. And you say, well, yes, and then you start answering it. Okay, this is the problem with the president who always creates these straw men. Mm -hmm. it, every pro he looks at every problem around the world and says, I don't want to be Iraq. I don't want to be Afghanistan. As if there's no in-between. As if yeah. anybody is saying, please, Mr. President, we want you to send 100,000 troops in. No, what we would like oh, is man. perhaps maybe you could step up the air campaign. Or... Maybe let us know that you've sent special forces to Nigeria to beat back Boko Haram. Maybe let us know that there are some other things that you could possibly do. And sometimes you, foreign policy needs to be aggressive. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it needs to be cautious. Mm -hmm. Some people might say President Bush was too aggressive. Some people might say President Obama is giving caution a bad name. There is middle ground. There is circumstances. There are different ways that you can fight this. It's, but, but don't... Republicans everywhere, do not fall for what Julie <laughs> just tried to do. You're this such a chub. You fell for it. Yeah. The but guys, so, yeah, so let's it. like get a little focus, a lateral at the table. The bottom line is we are focusing on ISIS, and that is a real, credible threat at this moment in time. I'm not going to speculate about what we're going to do down the line with respect to foreign policy. What I do know, as Americans, we should say it's all on the table. We're all in whatever it takes. Know that if you come against Well, but us. here's what I want to stress. I want to stress, that I said this the other day, that if we do what you're advocating, this See, she's doing it again. This requires, she just did no, it again. No, what you're advocating, but if you're, no, you guys are. Listen, listen, this is serious. You guys are. Talking, I'm serious, but, but I can't. That cannot be the position. You're talking, that every Republican you're, wants. It's, no, I'm actually speaking to Greg. Every, what you're, what, don't what, what, what? Don't answer. Don't answer. Your lawyer is telling you to keep quiet. Don't let her pull your chain. Look, if you're talking about going after ISIS, if you're talking about taking them on, yes. every capacity, mm -hmm. what you're talking about is committing. Yes. The United States military to a multi-decade, multi-front war. That's the only way to defeat them. Boots on the ground. Well, what's the alternative? Well, yeah, well, I, I, I like how you're doing it. So what you're saying is forget, forget this. Just let it happen. No, is that that's what you're not what saying? I'm saying. Is that's that what not what saying? I'm saying. I'm saying that. Then we, what are you saying? What I'm saying is if we're actually talking about this, let's be realistic. Instead of throwing out these jingoistic things, we've got to go so get go them. We've got to go no, get no, them. Oh, I get it. Let's be realistic. Your country is jingoistic. No. Defending your country is jingoistic. That's a new one. Nice. Wrong. Wrong. Nice. Talking. So, wrong. No, no. Excuse so, me. So what, talking. What no, is, you're wrong. The, what is the right strategy then? So the right strategy, I don't know what the right strategy is. Well, there you go. Actually, you know, but you know what I'm talking. You know what? I don't know what the right strategy is because every single option is horrible. Well, right. And, we the, do, and that's the that point. And that, that's that my point is that these are much more, these, these, these are, are complex problems. Right. Yeah. But the, yeah. And here's a, so here's a question that we'll let Julie answer in a political fashion. Yeah. Um, to put your political strategy hat on. If foreign policy is going to be a determining factor in the election, 
how does Hillary Clinton then, who, if the country is saying we want a new direction on foreign policy, since she was part of the old foreign policy, right. then how does she take what she thinks is now arguably her best strength, which is being Secretary of State, and turn that into more of a strength for her, or is it now her weakness? Well, first of all, I think you're right. I think it's a challenge for her, and this is not something that she's going to be able to skate in on. I do think she's not running in a vacuum, and the problem for the Republicans is going to be what do they espouse? And again, I keep going back to this. You can't talk about the fact that you want to just go in there. No, 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 that was it was not, no, actually, it was not a criticism. He actually has a pretty diverse no, group of what advisors. I, excuse me. We can provide you with the list. What I'm, it's not just from fine. prior Bushes. It's from fine. a lot of What I'm suggesting is I just named three people who have got three different views on foreign policy in the Republican field. Well, She's going to be running against one of them, I suspect. Well, she can and Marco Rubio. Say, and Marco Rubio. Yeah. Marco, Marco Rubio, Eric, said to, that his foreign policy experience tops everyone else. So obviously he thinks that that's going to be a selling point because the Republicans who are bundling, these are the people that are trying to raise the money, right. they are focused on foreign policy, it's very important to them, and so they're asking those Republican candidates to tell them what they would do differently than Obama. I, I, I think foreign policy clearly is going to be one of the issues. Is it going to be the, the, the biggest issue? I, I go back to this, I think the economy is, will still be the most important thing. Yeah. Yes, it's important now, right now because, because we're fighting ISIS, we don't know what we're doing, we're kind of fighting, we're kind of not fighting them, we're telling them we're fighting them, then we're not, then we're hugging it out, we feel your pain, ISIS, it's probably because you don't have economic opportunity or jobs. I think eventually though, down the road, people are going to get back to, how can I make life better for my family? That's always going to matter. Safety is, is number yeah. one, but once we establish, no, the all right, we at least have matter. a handle what's going on in the Middle East, then you get back to how do I how do how do I make how can I buy a nicer car? How can I get a make my it's kids middle a class more middle class wages? And you know who talked about that last night mm -hmm. is a possible candidate, Mike Huckabee, who was on Megyn Kelly's show last night, and he he actually it was in a poll yesterday uh, at the top spot, and he said it's because I'm focusing on what people care about, which is the economy and how to improve and increase middle class wages. I don't know about that. He also well, talked, he did he, say that. Yes, but, you know, he also <laughs> talked about Beyonce. This is a perfect opportunity to ignore the stuff that gets you into trouble. So if you're a, you, you, you have to be a candidate and not a commentator, which means you don't have to have opinions all on, on sillier stuff. You should focus on the fact that there is ISIS and there is an economy. The best metaphor right now in my mind is that it's. Adult swim. All the children have to get out of the pool. This White House is a bunch of kids that have been playing in the pool for six for six peeing years, in peeing it. in the pool. Yeah. It's time for them to get out. Peeing. Get out. They've done nothing. <laughs> They've done but give people E. coli. <laughs> so you can talk about childhood obesity all you want and teen smoking, but save that for next year Lunches. and focus on ISIS. <laughs> And getting rid of probably the biggest uh, uh, international challenge that we've seen in decades. I look forward to hearing how you intend to do that, Ken. I think I've made it pretty clear. No, you <laughs> haven't actually. I think. What, I okay, think, I gotta go. I believe my client did not stutter when he laid down his plan. Yes, yes, I think I was quite clear. And by the way, uh, you're wearing red again. I'm not. You're yes. so colorblind. This is like a salmony color. This yes, is not yes. red. And you no. are Russian. I am. Yes, Isn't, so you, aren't you married to a Russian? Yes, but that's welcome. Welcome to the family. Yes. Thank All you. right. We're going to go on to the B block because we've got more to talk.